good morning to one and all present here. Hope all of you are having a wonderful day and hope all of you are keeping well in these testing times. I am Yukta Loda, student of MSc Mathematics at SMIT. I will be your MC for the day. To get things started, I will be calling upon my good friend Anisha Chetri to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Yukta. Um, good morning, one and all. I am Anisha Chetri, and it gives me immense warmth and great pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar on real analysis and problem solving of real numbers and sequence and series on behalf of Sikkim Manipal Institute of Technology. Firstly, I'd like to welcome our respected director, sir, Dr. Ashish Sharma. I would also like to express my heartful gratitude to sir for granting us the permission to organize this webinar. I would like to extend my warm welcome uh, to our guest speaker for today, sir, Riyastin, assistant professor of mathematics, Kadir Mohindin College. Thank you, sir, for joining us despite your hectic schedule. I would also like to welcome our respected HEG sir of mathematics department, Dr. Anjan Raj Chaudhary. Thank you, sir, for giving us the opportunity to organize and conduct this webinar. Further, I'd like to extend my warm welcome to all the faculty members of the mathematics department who, who helped us, who worked tirelessly and helped us throughout to, ex, uh, to organize this webinar. And last but not the least, I'd like to welcome all the participants. We are thrilled to have you here to have you participate in our webinar. I hope that today inspires ideas and discussions and will help us have a deep understanding of the subject and a better approach to our problem solving uh, ideas on real analysis. I would now request my friend Nikta to take over and continue further with this program. Thank you. Thank you, Anisha. Now I would like to request Dr. Ranjan Roy Chaudhary, head of the Department of Mathematics, SMIT, to give us overview of the webinar. So over to you. Good morning to one and all. Uh, good morning to, uh, to, uh, to all the participants and uh, uh, good morning, special good morning to our department colleagues. Uh, but this is uh, another uh, initiative from our department uh, uh, just to uh, make uh, mathematics more uh, appealing to the uh, students. Uh, uh, especially in this part of uh, countries, uh, because of its geographical locations, uh, the students, especially uh, uh, BSc first year levels, uh, they do not have the good uh, access to the um, uh, special courses such as the uh, 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 and all this uh, in the related areas. So we felt that uh, one should have uh, some kind of uh, uh, um, uh, series of lectures that will stimulate the students and uh, uh, create their uh, uh, problem solving uh, attitude and uh, with this by attending this uh, series of uh, lectures. And this is a special initiative from our department. I uh, congratulate uh, Dr. David uh, taking up this initiative. And uh, uh, so this thing obviously doesn't work uh, with the active support my department and colleagues who, who all played a key role in having this uh, done. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the special uh, 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 this thing to contribute to all uh, other uh, my departmental uh, uh, uh for um, uh, taking part and uh, actively supporting us in. Uh, uh, getting it, uh, this thing um, organized. Uh, I would like to extend my uh, uh, this uh, support to all my colleagues and also request Professor Riyaz Dean to who have kindly consented uh, to uh, take part in this webinar series. Uh, the Department of Mathematics has a rich tradition. Uh, 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 in delivering all this kind of uh, 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 this series of lectures, uh, uh, for the last uh, four and five years we conducted uh, uh, um, two uh, seminars and workshops uh, uh, in uh, 2017 and 2022 workshop, uh, we organized a workshop uh, on uh, game theory and spatial materials. Both are funded by uh, National Board of Biomathematics. So uh, uh, this department has a tradition in uh, uh, 
uh, in organizing uh, something and also uh, uh, this gives uh, uh, we uh, uh, take uh, uh, regular uh, initiative in providing uh, support to other departments. Uh, the department has a uh, uh, twelve uh, faculty members and uh, uh, along with uh, ten uh, research scholars uh, who are actively uh, uh, supporting uh, in terms of their knowledge base and in terms of their research work. Uh, so, uh, so we have a very rich tradition in you know, all these areas. Okay, so now over to David. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, sir. Now I would, I am glad to introduce you to the speaker for the day, Mr. S. Riazuddin, assistant professor at Adir Mohitin College, who is well known for explaining the real analysis in an intuitive manner. First, he goes through the geometry of the problem before getting into the proof in his unique way. He completed his B.Sc. Mathematics from Khadir Mohitu College and his M.Sc. Mathematics from Bharati Dasan University. He has three years of experience as an assistant professor of mathematics. He has been a guest lecturer at numerous workshops. He has won numerous prizes in quizzes, quizzes puzzles, solving, and paper presentation, including First prize in state level competition, NECOMAT 2018, Integration 2018, Math Zest 2018, Gematics 2017. Sir, it is our honor to have you here. I take this opportunity to invite you to take up the session. Over to you, sir. Hi, this is Riyas. Uh, I begin in the name of the most merciful Almighty. I wish peace be upon you. First of all, I would like to thank the event organizer, also my uh, senior, Dr. David George Michael, HRD of the department, and the director of this institute for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you. Also, I'd like to thank each and every professors, seniors, and friends who taught me. And I also like to mention my parents here for their support throughout my life. Without further delay, uh, we proceed to our webinar. First question is, what is the function? Can anyone tell what is the function is? Can anyone define the, what is the map from uh, the set X to Y? A function is a relation from a non-empty set to another non-empty non set. Uh, OK. Not all relations are function. But there is a special condition in that. Uh, there is some condition in that. For every in one set, it is a special relation in which every element of host set has only one unit. In particular, the function is a rule which defines every element in X to a unique element in Y. Okay. What do you mean by graph of F? In graph of F, F we plot the points like where X goes to Y. Uh, from function to f of x. Okay. Uh, x in horizontal and f of x in vertical. Uh, okay. That's not an, uh, then, uh, think, uh, actually, graph of f is a set. It is a collection. Uh, collection of what? Set of points. Set of points? Image of what a function. Well, if it is in the two dimension, then it is the in the form of x comma f of x. This is the yeah. set of two tuples. Yeah, yeah. That is uh, that what I'm asking. This is the collection of x comma f of x ordered by x comma f of x. Sorry. Such that x where is in x. Uh, I just defined the f from the function is from x to y. Okay. This is a graph of f, right? When you define the, when we draw the graph of F, this is some function, uh, just maybe. 
okay like this is be a function what can you say when uh, every uh, line parallel to x axis intersects at least one time uh, at least uh, once in the graph of a i'm asking what do you say when every line parallel to x axis intersects at least one point uh in the graph so graph is surjective yeah function is surjective sir function is surjective okay right so uh, if you can uh, then you have to surjective just we mentioned the onto okay what do you say when the line parallel to x axis cuts two points in the graph when it cuts two point what do you say it is not injective yeah it is not injective if uh, cuts a uh, one time only then uh, exactly uh, i'm saying that if we cuts sorry the line parallel to x axis uh, intersect at most one point then it should be a one one right okay uh, just uh, tell me what is the archimedean properties for every real number there is a natural number which is greater than that real number so uh, okay. so if we have x number y greater than 0 let x greater than 0 and y be a real number okay then we have a, a natural number in n k in n mm, okay okay i just mentioned it as an n no problem with it okay such that such that n x mm. is greater than y mm. okay n x is always greater than y it shows that uh, for every x plus 2 there exists a natural number again such that n x greater than y right first is also a uh, some question of archimedean property for every real number there is a natural number such that n greater than y that is also a version of archimedean property actually archimedean property is nothing but natural number set of natural number is not bounded above right okay this question was asked in december 2016 let f belongs to uh, open interval 0 comma 1 then which of the following are true is are true what you can say about the first first option for every n in n there exists n such that f greater than or equal to m by n is it right or not yes sir how by archimedean property Yes, sir. M is also a real number. Ah, uh, yeah. Can tell the proof of it. I uh, just uh, not uh, regular proof. It's just uh, hint. Sir, uh, one problem. Your voice is something uh, breaking. I think uh, it is not breaking right here. Uh, I think is it audible for audio audio everyone? It's perfect actually in my end. Uh, maybe subject oh, might okay. have some internet issue, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Now it is clear. Oh, okay. You don't say uh, if it is true. You don't say the proof of this. Uh, sir, s belongs to zero comma one. That means s is greater than zero, and okay. m is a uh, m belongs to natural number. That means it belongs to R. Okay. And uh, so there exists a natural number such that s n is greater than m. By Archimedean property, there exists a natural number n s greater than m. This implies yes greater than m by n. Okay. Since so therefore, first option is right. What about the second option?
what you say about uh, for every mnl for every mnl there you can you give a natural number such that yes less than m by n Uh, sir, I think it is just the negation of the first one. So by the first one is holds the Archimedean property. Uh, sir, it might hold and uh, might not. Okay. Sir, so uh, if n is not uh, sir. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Wait a uh, it will hold. How? How? Sir, uh, s is between zero to one, and uh, yeah. since we can take any n in capital N, so we can assume n to be one. Yeah, that's right. If n equal to one, then m by n equal to m. What uh, then? Sir, since s belongs to zero comma one. Then yeah. uh, n is a natural number. A m yes, will be greater than one. That is less than or equal to m. Okay. M. Therefore, this option is also holds. What do you say about this option? For every m in n, there exists n in n such that yes equal to m by n. What do you say about m by n? Sir, this is no not m by n. Not true, sir. Why? So because no m or n can exist as that as lies between mm. zero and one. No, the, for every m in n, there should be some. Uh, there may be some n such that m by n uh, belongs to zero comma one. Example, let the m be m equal to one and uh, n equal to two. One by two, which belongs to that set. Sir, it will not be true if s is a irrational number. Yeah, yeah that's a key. If s is an irrational number, but uh, in the right hand side, m by n is a rational number. We know that an irrational number is nothing but a real number difference a rational number, right? We mention an irrational number as a or difference q only, right? Therefore, this may be whole. Okay, what about the last option? Here the key was m plus n. Here the key was m plus n. Sir, it is false. Why? Sir, because minimum of both m and n is one and one, and okay. that can become two. So s can yeah. never be m plus n always greater than or equal to two. This implies yes is always greater. Than, if it is true, then yes is greater than or equal to two. But it is contra contradiction to Yes, belongs to one, right? But the, I think argument for three is also uh, useful for uh, you can be used for four because both m and n are can be considered as rational numbers, so their sum is a rational number. Uh, can you tell the tell your point clearly? If m and n are from natural numbers, they are rational numbers also. Yeah. So they are sum oh, yeah, is rational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So same yeah. argument for three we have used. We can uh, use. We have, yeah, we can use it also. Okay. Uh, what is? Hmm. What? Taking any rational number, n also might work. Ah, yeah. If uh, yes equal to any rational number, this uh, may not be true because this uh, because of this. Yes. Because yeah. sum of the natural number has to be a natural, cannot be a rational number. Purely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you say about the upper bound? When you say. Uh, Alpha is upper bound of some a. When you say alpha should be an upper bound of a. So every element in a is less than uh, equal to alpha. Yeah. 
for every uh, elements in every element in uh, a should be less than or equal to alpha right what is say about uh, least problem every upper bound of a huh? minimum of a upper bound of a so okay minimum of upper bound is a uh, how you define it every upper bound let beta be any upper bound okay there is uh, two option to define it uh, any number which is greater than alpha is an upper bound so uh, like uh, any upper bound is greater than or equal to alpha and also if anything less than alpha is not an upper bound is it clear yes sir okay one minute i'm saying where is that question is okay uh, the following question was asked in december 2017 Just consider this. Let R be the set of real numbers, and uh, Q be the set of all rational numbers. For zero less than or equal to epsilon less than or equal to one by two, let A epsilon be the open interval zero comma one minus epsilon. Which of the following are true? Just uh, just leave it there. Leave it first. What do you say about alpha A epsilon? What is the set A epsilon? A epsilon is the set. Uh, it is given. 0,1 minus epsilon the question was about uh, supremum of e epsilon and infimum of e epsilon right so just find the infimum and the supremum of e epsilon what is the infimum of e epsilon infimum is nothing but greatest to lowest bound right what you can say about infimum of e epsilon that e epsilon be any that 0 less than or equal to epsilon less than or equal to 1 by 2 what you can what do you say about infimum of e epsilon and supremum of e epsilon infimum is zero infimum is zero, zero. Uh. and supremum is half no supremum is supremum will be 1 minus epsilon yeah suppose uh, You can't say uh, epsilon is. You can't say supremum is one by two. Suppose epsilon equal to one by one by four. What will happen? So you know, uh, suppose epsilon equal to zero, then the set will be zero comma one. One by two belongs to set, and uh, one three by four like that. There are uh, some elements in this set. Okay, there is nothing. It is very clear now. Uh, supremum of e epsilon equal to one minus epsilon, right? Okay, what is the first option here? Just check supremum of zero less than or equal to is one by two less than or equal to one by two. What you can say about it? You are counting this one minus epsilon and taking supremum of this. You say that supremum of e epsilon is one minus epsilon. What you can say about this? Uh, This set supremum of zero less than or equal to epsilon less than or equal to one by two. It should be equal to one. Uh, just to first define what, uh, just say what is it equal to? Supremum of zero less than or equal to epsilon less than or equal to one by two. It is uh, I think, but one minus epsilon, right? So what is supremum zero here? Yeah. Supremum zero. No. No. What is that? 
I am just clearing that the supremum of uh, zero less than or equal to epsilon less than or equal to one by two. Supremum of e epsilon that set should be equal to supremum of zero less than or equal to epsilon less than one by two one minus epsilon. Oh, you okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. We proved that supremum of e epsilon is one minus epsilon. Just we are substituting this. Okay. Now say what is the supremum of this set? Just to say the uh, supremum of the set, one minus epsilon, such that zero less than or equal to epsilon less than or equal to. Okay, one minute, one minute. Just to say, uh, supremum of the set one minus epsilon such that zero less than or equal to epsilon less than or equal to one by two. Just to say, what is the supremum of this set? So one, uh, no, sorry, uh, half. It should be one. One. Why? One sir. For epsilon equal to zero, this uh, there is a element in here that is equal to one. Okay. For epsilon equal to zero, there is a element equal to one. There is no element greater than one appear here. Okay, that is a uh, one is clearly it is one is a upper bound. For any number less than one, there is a element here. Uh, just for uh, you can choose the element here, right? It is very clear now. The supremum is equal to one, but the option is is strictly less than one, so this option cannot be true. Everything, everything clear in that? Is everything clear in that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What you say about uh, if epsilon one is less than or equal to less than epsilon two, and compare infimum of a epsilon one and infimum of a epsilon two. Regardless of epsilon, what is the infimum of e epsilon? Zero. Zero. So therefore, for any epsilon, infimum of e epsilon is zero. If it is true, if the second option is true, then uh, what will you get? Zero less than zero, right? So this is uh, absurd. So we will. This option is not possible. Right? What do you say about uh, zero less than epsilon one less than epsilon two one by two in place supremum of e epsilon one greater than supremum of e epsilon two? First, to say what is supremum of e epsilon one? What is supremum of e epsilon one? One minus epsilon one. One minus epsilon one. Uh, what is the supremum of e epsilon two? One minus epsilon two. What do you say about uh, if epsilon one is less than epsilon two? What you can conclude about one minus epsilon one and one minus epsilon two? So one minus epsilon one is greater than one minus epsilon. Yeah, just uh, do it by a step by step. Epsilon one less than epsilon two implies minus epsilon one greater than minus epsilon two. This implies one minus epsilon one greater than one minus epsilon two. Right? Therefore, supremum of e epsilon one is greater than supremum of e epsilon two. Therefore, this option is true, right? What do you say about uh, this option? Okay, before going in it, I forgot to ask you something. What do you mean by dense set? Sir, if we choose any element from the set, any I two said, elements. Okay, I just mentioned uh, d subset of x. When you say d is a dense set in x. So when uh, we choose any two element from d, x and yeah. y belong to x. 
Oh. Then there exists uh, Z. There is a okay. Uh, such that x comma uh, x less than d less than y. Yes, x less than d less than y. Y. Yeah. For any two number, there is a element from the dense set which is between those numbers. Okay. Between those open interval, x comma y. Okay, now the uh, now consider this. What is the uh, what is the supremum of a epsilon intersection q? What you can say about this set q? Sir, it will collect only rational numbers between one uh, between zero to one minus epsilon. Okay, that's not a problem. I just asking what you. What do you know about Q in the as a subset of R? It Q is dense in R. Yeah, Q, is dense in R. Q is dense in R, right? Uh, now see. What do you can con conclude that a uh, supremum of A epsilon intersection Q? What do you can say about a uh, supremum of A epsilon intersection Q? it will be 1 minus epsilon only yeah why suppose uh, you can choose if there is a y less than 1 minus epsilon by q dense there should be an element between y and 1 minus epsilon right yes sir let me uh, we choose that uh, some q1 right Less than Q1, less than 1 minus epsilon. This implies Q1, Q1 is uh, clearly belong to A epsilon. Is it right or not? Q1 belongs to A epsilon. Is it right or not? Yes, sir. No. Yes. There may be uh, some case that Q1 does not belong to this set. You can get a element Q1 such that belongs to A epsilon intersection Q. That is not a problem. I just said that this Q1 belongs to Q only. There is some case such that Q1 does not belong to this set. Let's choose y equal to minus 1. Minus 1 by 2 is a rational number between the minus 1 and the 1 minus s1, right? This q1 may be that, uh, that minus 1 by 2. Suppose y is uh, negative just to choose a rational number between 0 and 1 minus epsilon. That's it. If y is positive, there is uh, nothing to prove just a q1 belongs to that set. If y is negative, just to choose a rational number between 0 and 1 minus epsilon. Okay, this is enough. This implies supremum of this set is equal to 1 minus epsilon. What is there about this set? What is there about the set R becomes Q? Sir, it is also a dense set, so it will also be 1 minus epsilon. 1 minus epsilon. Therefore, this uh, both uh, both minimum is equal to 1 minus epsilon. Therefore, this option is also true. Right? Okay. Just move on to another question. What you can? Uh, what is the definition for the function f is one one? Can you define it? No two element in the domain corresponds to the same element. Uh, 
if x1 is not equal to x2 mm-hmm. okay that's our definition i uh, just uh, i just asking you as sim- in simple terms sir if uh, y belongs to the image of f then it will have a unique tree image no i am just talking that the uh, different elements in the x has different image every, image. every element is mapped uniquely to the elements yeah. you are saying uh, i am not saying you are wrong just a uh, thing like this different elements in x have different images in y that is a uh, that is equal uh, equal to say that x not equal to y in place f of y x not equal to f of y okay when you say f is on to so if the range set is equal to y uh, mm, that's not wrong if uh, every yeah, element in y have a three image yeah that is the question uh, Okay, I think those two are okay. Ah, uh, I forgot to ask something. To prove a condition for a every element, what do you have to prove? Just I am asking a simple question. How you prove that the statement is true or false? I am just asking. Every person attending this webinar is listening this problem. Okay, this is my statement. Every person attending this webinar is listening to this problem. to prove this is true what do you have to check okay uh, just the same you when you say this statement is false So if we pick uh, an one participant who is not uh, listening, then we are done. That means we have yeah. to disprove it. Yeah. If you want to prove it, uh, you have to say that every person is uh, listening to this problem. If uh, you want to disprove this, you you have to check. Uh, you have to find the person who is not listening this. Right? That's the key. Okay. Uh, next question we are going to see was uh, which was asked in December 2017 CSA problem. Uh, let is it denote the set of integer and is it greater than or equal to zero denote the set of uh, set zero onto the uh, set of non-negative integers. Consider map from is it greater than or equal to zero cross is that given by sorry two is that I just forgot to mention it two is that given by Yes, of n comma n equal to two power n into two power n plus one. The question was then the map is subjective, uh, but not exactly like this. Just so we will prove what is the is it one one or not? Just we will check check this uh, function as one one or not. If you have done it, the answer is always you can again answer. Can anyone say this function is one one or on two? So it is not on two, sir. Why? Because one has no pre-image. One does not have a pre-image. One has no pre-image. Okay. Suppose, uh, yeah, there is a simple. 
more simple question uh, element there zero is also does not have a pre-image suppose zero equal to some two power n into two power n plus one in place two power m equal to zero or two power n plus one equal to zero these both are not possible okay yeah one has a pre-image one has a pre-image if m equal to uh, zero and n equal to zero what you can say about two power zero into two power zero plus one that is equal to one right one has a pre-image n can't be zero no sir so n can't be zero why oh z z z yeah n can be zero one has a pre-image zero does not have a pre-image okay therefore this function is not on two this f is not on two okay what you say about uh one one What do you say about one one? Just try to do it. Sir, if you, I think f is on on because if we pick up two element m and n, and their functional image will be different. Yeah, you can prove it. Uh, like, there's an easy way to prove it. Uh, if f of x is equal to f of y, then you can choose like that. It is easy way to prove. This function is the one one that is right. Easy way to prove is if f of x equal to f of y, then x equal to y. This is an easy way to prove it. You can check it by your own. If anyone has a doubt in this, we can prove here. If anyone has a doubt in this. Okay, this question uh, clearly this one one and this. therefore what is the option? Injective but not subjective. Is it clear? Yes. Shall we move on to next question? Okay. What do you what do you say about a bounded sequence? First of all, what is a sequence? What is a sequence? A sequence is a function from n to r. Okay. If it is a real sequence, it is a function from n to r. Uh, okay, that's enough. What is bounded sequence? What is bounded? Sequence? Is bounded. What? Uh, it's in it bounded, right? Okay, just to be well, just a x is a function from n to r. We will uh, define as x of n equal to n. X n. Okay. Then say what is a bounded sequence? So uh, modulus of x n for. Uh, okay. There is some more positive such that modulus of less than is less than okay. Uh, uh, that is that obviously uh, means uh, x and the traction x and have an upper bound. Okay, 
uh, not upper bone and the half uh, modulus of xn that has said has an upper bone okay what do you say about the convergence sequence the convergence sequence is bounded oh that's not i'm not i'm asking that is true uh, i'm asking about uh, what do you say about convergence what is the definition of convergence sequence uh if a sequence is uh, has a limit then it is a convergent sequence what do you mean by a limit it's if the limit superior and the limit inferior are equal and they exist finitely okay the, those are the theorems i'm just asking the basic definition of convergent sequence can you say it's equal and yeah Uh, uh, a sequence is convergent when, uh, after a few steps, we can see the distance between two elements of the sequence is decreasing. Is uh... okay. Uh, we can say a yeah, sequence x and converges to some x if after some the final stage. The elements in uh, the sequence, uh, terms of the sequence, get closest to x. We can define uh, the by definition for any the distance given for any epsilon given. You can uh, get a stage such that for n greater than equal to n naught, what we get distance between x n and x is less than epsilon. This is what we are uh, what are we are saying. We say that x n converges to x if after some stage the terms of the sequence get closest to x. Okay. Uh, do you remember the theorem Bolzano versus theorem? Anyone remember Balzano versus theorem? Every bounded sequence has a limit point. Yes, no. Uh, okay, that's true. But uh, every bounded subsequent, every bounded sequence has a limit point. Is convergent. Convergent subsequence. Convergent has a convergent subsequence. Yeah, Balzano versus uh, Balzano versus theorem was every bounded. Sequence have has a convergent subsequence, right? The following question was uh, related to these things, which was asked in uh, December two thousand nineteen. Let A and B a bounded uh, sequence of real numbers. Then what you can say about this? Uh, we will start with last option. There is a subsequence of A n which is convergent. This is a Boltzmann of Weierstrass theorem, right? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, what do you say about suppose there is a some if you get an uh, subsequence, can you generate a uh, one more sequence through it? If you get one subsequence, can you generate one more subsequence through uh, using that subsequence? The question was: If you get one convergent subsequence, can you generate one more uh, convergent subsequence for the original sequence? Yes, sir. How? Not necessary. So the sequence is bounds convergent then only. No, you can uh, generate one more uh, subsequence. Suppose uh, A and K was the Convergent subsequence. Just I mentioned it as. A, just I mentioned it as a and k. That means a n one, 
A N two, etc. Right? Yes, sir. So we can change A N one into something else, then it will become a different uh, subsequence. Uh, very easy. Then, that we we will remove the first time and consider it just as a second subsequence. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was also a subsequence. There is nothing wrong with it. Okay. Can you generate one more? Uh, remove yes, two times. And uh, you can proceed like this. You can proceed like this uh, for infinitely many times. Okay. You can proceed uh, k minus one times. What? We can proceed k minus one times or uh, until the last one uh, uh, lasts. No, this. Uh, no, we can proceed infinite times like this. Yeah. Because n a n k means uh, it is it is a uh, uh, finite limiting term. So uh, k I'm is just, a. I'm not saying that finite limiting term. A n k. Okay, okay, just, fine, fine, fine. Just okay. I am saying this is a a n k k varies in n. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And this is standard uh, notation for the sequence, right? Okay. Uh, if you find a sequence, subsequent one subsequence, then you can generate. Infinitely many subsequence throughout that sequence. Okay. What is there about the first option? Every subsequence of a sequence a n is convergent. If a n is bounded, can Not you true. say every subsequence why? Uh, can you give an counter example? Minus one to the power n. Yeah, sequence minus one to the power n. The sequence is bounded, but this is not self. Con uh, okay, this is not convergent. Can you say every subsequence of the sequence is not convergent? Here, say every subsequence of the sequence a n is convergent, right? You have to say one subsequence which is not convergent. You say choose a n equal to. Uh, let's say you are mentioning that choose a n equal to minus one power n, right? Don't you use the same? Uh... Idea of letting it. No, every sequence is a subsequence of the same sequence, right? Yeah. And that plays a role here. This a n is also a subsequence so we, of a n. So we can find a subsequence uh, such that it uh, it does not converge. No, just a simple thing. Every sequence is a kind of, its own subsequence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, the the sequence is subsequence of a n. It is not convergent. Okay, so therefore this option is not true. Uh, what do you say about there is exactly one subsequence of a n which is convergent? This says that, right? We can not generate infinitely many subsequence. Therefore, yes. this is also not true. Okay. You want to clear with it? Okay, let's move on to algebra of limits. Suppose x n converges to some x and y n converges to some y. What do you say about x n plus y n? It converges to x plus y. X plus y. What do you say about one by x n? It converges to one by x converges to one by x given x n not zero exactly. One by x n converges to one by x one by x provided yeah non-zero terms. X n and the x also no x should not be zero. Consider the sequence x n equal to one by n. These terms are non-zero, but it converges to zero, right? Suppose if x equal to zero, then you are saying this. You are understanding the it is clear, right? Okay. One by x n converges to one by x, provided x n and x not equal to zero. Okay, just. Uh, 
we move on to the problem which was asked in June 2019. Suppose xn be a sequence of positive reals, let yn equal to xn plus so xn divided by 1 plus xn. Then which of the following is are true? What is the first option? xn is convergent if yn is convergent. Is it true? xn is convergent if yn is convergent. Is it true? Maybe we will check the second option first. Yeah. yn is convergent if xn is convergent. Uh, I think everyone which uh, someone may confuse with a uh, if then statement, right? Sir, xn is convergent. That means 1 plus xn is also convergent. Yeah. So, xn is convergent and 1 plus xn, we can... Yeah, xn yes, 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 is convergent and 1 plus xn converges to 1 plus x. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sir, so we can we can consider another yeah, sequence uh, yeah, yeah. yn equal to one plus xn. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. xn by yn yeah. is also convergent. Yeah, uh, I just forgot to mention something. Xn into yn is also converges to x into y. Uh, I just forgot to mention that in algebra of mix. Okay, uh, this one by uh, one plus xn converges to one plus x implies one by one plus xn converges to 1 by 1 plus x. Why? Because xn is a sequence of positive reals. Right? And uh, this implies 1 plus xn is also a sequence of positive reals. And 1 plus x not equal to 0. Even if x equal to 0, 1 plus x is not equal to 0. This 1 plus x is always greater than or equal to 1. There only, uh, then only 1 plus xn converges to 1, plus, 1 by 1 plus x. Uh, this implies xn by 1 plus xn converges to x plus sorry converges to x by 1 plus x right okay therefore second option is true uh, just to check the first option now why do you say xn is convergent if yn is convergent So for this uh, problem, for this first option, we can find out xn in terms of yn. Then we can uh, find the solution. Okay. Okay, that's that's a big problem. Don't uh, just uh, just see it simple in a simple way. Just to think of. Uh, so if I can think of a contradiction here, uh, such that. Y converges, but X does not. Like yeah. I guess think of one. Stop. I guess if I try, I can think of one. Uh, I can give it a try. Just a minute. Just uh, choose uh, Yn equal to, just to simplify it. Yn equal to, what do you get? Xn divided by xn into 1 plus 1 by xn right you can just like uh, think of 1 by xn can you find the sequence now such that yn converges but xn uh, does not converges Sir, also we can do another way that is uh, yn equal to uh, xn by uh, xn upon 1 plus xn. Then yeah. from there we can track xn equal to yn by 1 minus yn. Uh, say we can uh, uh, yn uh, uh, is convergent, then 1 minus yn is necessary not to be convergent. What are you saying? xn equal to uh, xn by 1 plus xn in place? xn equal to yn by 1 minus yn. Yes sir. This? yes, sir. How is this possible? Sir, by simple algorithm. Uh, by just uh, can, uh, doing calculation. Hmm. 
I'm not getting it. So y n equal to x n equal to x. X n equal to n, sir. Example, sir. Yeah. X n equal to okay. I'm just not verifying this. N. N. Just choose x n equal to n. Right. Uh, just choose x n equal to n. Then uh, one by n converges to zero. One plus one by n converges to one. Then the sequence y n converges to one. But the original sequence x n does not converges. Okay. Y n convergent, but x not is not convergent. Therefore, this option is not true. What do you say about the final uh, fourth option? X n is bounded if Y n is bounded. What do you say about uh, Y? Not true. Why? Not true. So, uh, so the previous thing, uh, what we saw, n uh, x n equal to n, x n wasn't bounded, yeah. though y okay. was bounded. Okay, that's uh, give the answer. But uh, you can find the bound of y n without anything. So it it is um, always less than uh, one. Yeah, because x n is less than or equal to not less than less than or equal to it is less than one plus x n. It is always less than one plus x n. This implies x n by one plus x n is always less than one, right? Therefore, y n is less than one. Y n is always less than one. Okay, you can conclude this option is true because even if uh, x n is not bounded, also y n is bounded. But uh, okay, this option is also true. If x n is bounded, we can uh, we can find the bound using that also. Therefore, this option is also true. But note that y n is always bounded. Not necessary. Uh, this is x n bounded is not necessary. Okay. Y n is always bounded, even if X n is not bounded. Uh, the sequence Y n is bounded. Sir, how do you know about the lower bound? Lower bound is always zero, right? The X n are Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Oh. That's why I am just asking about um, just of x n plus y one plus x n. I am not considering this because each x n are positive. This modulus is equal to x n divided by one plus x n. That's why I am just asking about x n plus one plus x n. Okay. Can we move on to next question? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, same trick, uh, I think. Okay. I think nothing is needed for this question. Just move on to the next question. If x n is a convergent sequence in R and y n is a bounded sequence in R, then we conclude that. This question was asked in December 2018. Uh, what will conclude that? Sir, x n plus y n is bounded. Oh, okay, that's an option is true. X n plus y n is bounded. What is the fourth option? What about the fourth option? So it will be false. Yeah, because x n uh, plus y n is always bounded. x n plus y n is bounded. It is a subsequence of x n plus y n. Then this option is not true. Because uh, this x n plus y n is the bounded subsequence of this x n plus y n. Okay. 
and third one is also false. Why? By Bolzano Vestas. Bolzano Vestas theorem. Yeah. By Bolzano Vestas theorem, it is true. It is uh, this question. Uh, sorry, this option is false. Sir, and the first, first one. Sir, so first one is also false. We can find uh, such that it is not convergent. We can yeah, just to say uh, two equations, uh, two uh, sequences. So one by n and uh, one minus one. Yeah. Or minus one to the power n. I mean, one by n and okay. minus one to the power n. Yes, to choose x n equal to one and y n equal to minus one by n. One power n. Okay. Yes, sir, this is also true. Yeah. Therefore, this option is also false. Okay. Now move on to the next question. Uh, what is say when you will say the set was finite? When you the set uh, when you say when will you say the set A was finite? Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes. Hi. Hey, sir. Uh, guys, uh, we wanted to make it as uh, very, very interactive. Means expect everyone to interact with get the benefit yeah. out of it. Because the speaker is going at a pace that everyone can pick it up. That's why we are going very, very slow. Did not worry about the time limit. We are in solving each ten problems for the company. Session, that's all. All the 10 problems, every one of you has to track with this one. We keep this opportunity open for all of you, not only for very few of you. Please make sure that every one of you get involved in this session and get out of the most benefit and get it out. Thank you, Riyas. Thank you. So finite sense means uh, if we can list the elements of the set. In the other words, it can be uh, called a countable number of sets. Mm. For a set is set to but be if we can find the mapping from a uh, natural number to the set uh, and um, finite natural number to the set, as in? Uh, we just say, what is the finite set? A set which contains a finite number of elements. Yeah, that's okay, but uh, technical definition. Yeah, so no, another definition you can call. Uh, yes, uh, if we can uh, map a bijective mapping from the set of natural number to the set to the given set. Natural number system. Uh, repeat it. That will be numerable, not finite. Yeah, that is countable. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, coordinate your base finite, sir. What? Cardinality of A is finite. We will define the cardinality later on. Later we define the finite set itself. Okay. First we define what is finite set. Maybe we will define I n first then later we see. Yeah. Let's uh, define I n first. What is I n? I n is the subset of a natural number. One to n, right? So if we get a, if if we get a bijective mapping from uh, i n to the set a, yeah, uh, yeah, set is said to be finite if a is there is a bijection from a to i n, okay. Is it right? This is right, but uh, there is one more word which is uh, just missing. Oh, 
what you can say about a is a empty set is it finite or not yes yes sir but you yes, can't sir. give finite. a bijection from a to i n Uh, a definition of finite set is that uh, if a is empty or there is a bijection from a to i n okay you can say the set is finite if either a is empty or there is a bijection to a to i n is it clear now when you will say the set was countable countable or numerable right so when we get a bijective bijective mapping from a uh, natural number to the set or okay. uh, is it uh, empty no can you uh, what do you say about i n is this that is countable or not yes i is countable oh. but you can give a map uh, to n by just map to n right if we can define a map from the set to n is a subjective map no definition was oh, a simple map definition itself contains something yes set uh, yeah, set a is to be countable if it is finite or there exists a bijection to n Okay, if that was finite, then it will be considered as countable. Just uh, read the definition carefully. Uh, there is a, yes. in the definition, it uh, should be that. Yes, set A is said to be countable if it is finite or there is a bijection from A to natural number. Set, uh, set of all natural numbers. Okay. Mm. Okay. Just we move on to the next question. Okay. What do you say about this function? Uh, these options. This question is from uh, December two thousand seventeen. Which of the following is necessarily true for a function f from x to y? Is so first one to one. First one. Is not true. Why? So if the image of f is not equal to y, it will not be true. Uh, just if it image is not that. equal to the range. Just give a counter example for it. This is very easy. Sir, if we uh, take x uh, f from um, real number to r plus f is equal to x square if we take okay and then uh, g from uh, so y will be the uh, y will be whole r here and uh, g okay. will be from uh, g will be square root of uh, positive square root of uh, Okay, don't make a complicate. We can get a simple functions from x equal to one comma two and uh, y equal to finger ten set y. You can choose the function, any function. Just a uh, convert story. Uh, y is a single ten set and uh, x is a single ten set and y is a double ten set. Define f of one equal to one. This is a one one function, right? This is a one function. There is a uh, only one function from y to x. That is a constant function. If you uh, if you define any function, that should be a constant function for uh, this set. Clearly, g of two equal to one, right? What is f of g of two? F of one. 
sorry f of 1 that is equal to 1 you can give a function for this f you can give a function g from y to x such that f of g of y equal to y for all y in y okay it is a simple function you can give I think this is uh, this is not uh, that complicated. It is very simple. I'm just thinking of uh, this number only. I just if you get a second number to same number, uh, that's what the idea was. If we get two elements mapping to same number, that uh, you can't get uh, this type of function. That was I'm just thinking of. Okay, what you say? Uh, just leave this. Second example, first uh, second option, just solve third option first. If f is 1, 1 and y is countable, what do you say about the uh, x? Can x be finite? If f is 1, 1 and y is countable, implies x is finite? No. What you can choose? Uh, give a counter example there. Sir, you have to find will it. be finite. So we can choose hmm. uh, x to be uh, the set of natural number. Okay. And uh, y to be integers. And we define f, f of n equals to n. Okay, true. Okay. The function is? The function is one to one, and uh, y is countable, but x is, is not finite. Not finite. Yeah, you can choose that. The variable choose whatever the x value. Take yeah. any countable x, and take mm. y also equal to x. Equal to x. And I just uh, of x equal to yeah. X. I just choose x equal to y equal to any natural number. You can get a, if you give an identity map, that should be a 1, 1. But x is not finite. Not necessarily natural number, any countable system. Most of the time, we try for a complex examples. Yeah. Many times, just a very small example. Don't think uh, so much complicated. It is very easy only. If we see it as easy, you can get a very simple examples. Don't complicate, uh, don't complain much for this, uh, this type of questions. To solve CSAR exam, not only the knowledge uh, plays the role, timing also plays the role there. You have to solve the problem as minimal time you take. Uh, like how quick you can pass, how quick you can solve the problem. Try to solve the problem as quick as possible. Okay, what do you say about the fourth option? If f is onto and x is uncountable, then y is countably finite, infinite. If f is onto and x is uncountable, then y is countably infinite. Is this true or not? false? Just answer by intuition and then prove it. Uh. Sir, it is not true. Okay. What is the counter example? So if I take y to uh, y has only one element and all x is it is uh, yeah. sorry. Sorry. Right, right. 
if I x equal to only one element. I can uh, hear what is it? Why is a singleton set? Yeah, could be any singleton set. Yes, sir, the example is true. I guess, uh, if ha, huh. just give a constant function. Yes, sir, f of x equal to f of x equals to x. Sorry, one, uh, one, three. one, yeah, f of x equal to one. Yes. This function is uh, on two function, but y is not countably infinite. Okay. Yes. Sir. Now, what do you say about the second option? It has to be true. <laughs> okay, it has to be true. But what is the reason? So because f is subjective. Subjective. When the subjective map is defined, it automatically mm -hmm. becomes one. Because g of y is equal to y, you can say. I'm asking about uh, for given f is on two, can you find the function g from y to x such that f of g of y equal to y? You have to define the function. You have to say the function what g is. What is a uh, f? What is the if f is on two? What is the definition of f is on two? Every element of y has a pre image in x. Yeah. Given any element in y has a pre image, right? That uh, that means there exists x y such that f of x y equal to y. For any given way, there is a element. Right. Choose this as a element you want. Define g from y to x by g of y equal to this x y. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, by the existence of G, F is, mm. F is already one to one also. Yeah. So that means F is a uh, bijective function. F is not one one. Where is the F? We no, are not saying F is. At this we are not saying that F is one one. No. By the existence of G itself, F, gets yeah. one, F becomes one one. No need. Uh, because uh, if F is not one one, yeah, G becomes uh, one too many function. Yeah, we can choose uh, at least one element there. Answer this. Uh, just a minute. Consider this uh, f equal to f from uh, just uh, I choose uh, x equal to z and uh, y equal to n. Okay, define f of some m equal to modulus of m. Okay, uh, z minus zero. I will choose it because for simplicity. Uh, just Or we will add zero to this. 
f of m equal to small c m this function is onto function we can define g of some natural number equal to uh, what i mean is uh, g g of some natural number equal to natural that natural number itself g of n equal to n this is a function for this uh, f right yes this is this will look there this function is not 1 1 this f is not 1 1 but there is a function so f has to be 1 1 i think no because no, this f the is not 1 1 function is on to so the cardinality of y and x should be same yeah i saying this uh, x equal to uh, is that and y equal to wait just y equal to n union singleton zero right f of m equal to modulus of n minus 1 and plus 1 maps to same element i choose g of n equal to n g from y to uh, y to x such that g of n equal to n this function is not one uh, one one but there is a function like this the argument is not for hmm. all g Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can give a G where f will one two, but not one one. Example, hmm. our yes uh, is given. Take set of all integers and map minus one and plus one to one itself. It will become yeah. a one two function. So let's say that function is not one one. Still, you can define a G such that. Take the yeah, I can... element in the natural number system and map it to the same number. Identity map that satisfies the second option. F is not one. Anyway, yeah, I can give like the uh, this also. Hi. It's not a question. Question was something. Ah. This is not F knows. This is a identity map. Uh, like a, you can generate identity map using this. That's it. Yeah. This is not a F inverse. It's not really an identity map, also. Thus, uh, look like uh, not be equal to y all the time. Yeah. I'm saying not just identity uh, map all the time because g of y may not be equal to y all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying g is an identity map. F of uh, F composite g is an identity map. Yes. composite yeah. is negative uh, just so you can choose this out this also for your example x equal to minus 1 comma 1 and y equal to 1 this function is constant function uh, from the x to y is a constant function you can choose g of 1 equal to minus 1 also but f of g of 1 equal to f of minus 1 which is equal to 1 Is this clear? Yes, sir. So we move on to next question. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what you can say about this x? Consider the set of sequence. x equal to x n such that x n belongs to a double ten set zero comma one and uh, y equal to x n in x such that x n equal to one for at most finitely many n. This question was asked in December two thousand sixteen. CSA net question. So third option is true. Yeah, I'm just asking about what is x n y if x is countable or not and y is countable or not. I'm just asking that question only. I am not going to the option first. I uh, just was talking. What about what do you say about this x and what do you say about this y? Sir, x is countable. Why? X is uncountable and y is countable. 
So X is a sequence, right? So how can it be uncountable? Because it belongs to a state. It's not a sequence. Okay. X is a cutoff so sequence. A state of sequence. Okay. Whose sums are zero or one? That's only. X is uncountable. Y is countable. Yeah, just uh, say how X is uh, uncountable. You can uh, just uh, think of X as a function, right? Uh, sorry, sequence as a function, right? This is a collection of function from n to zero comma one, right? X is a collection of function from n to zero comma one. I think uh, you already proved this as an uncountable. This is an uncountable set. How will you prove it? Suppose this is a uh, countable, then there should be a bijection from the x to natural number. Then you can uh, enumerate this uh, like this: f1, f2, f3, etc. Right? If you found a bijection function, then you can enumerate like f1, f2, f3, and so on. Define a function g, g from n to singleton, I think this size, 0 to 1 by, this is a very simple tag, uh, simple point, I think uh, there is a proof, g of n equal to 1 if, one if exists. F and of n equal to zero. This uh, it is very simple, simple thing to I. That is like uh, you are choosing a function. There, there is not a matching this each of a function in there. I think you proved it already. Uh, just work out with this uh, g of n, and you can uh, prove that this g of n is not equal to any f of n, f n. Because suppose uh, if it is equal, then g of n equal to one implies f n of that n is not equal to one. Okay, it is very simple, and uh, y is countable because you can uh, see this as a set of all. Eventually, constant zero sequence, right? If you, uh, if your sequence has first time only a uh, one and uh, other terms is. Zero like uh, this will like look like a countable union of countable sets. This y n is uh, you can give a proof for it. Y n this is a regular problems. This uh, two are regular problems. You can give y as a countable union of countable set like a n n cross n like that. This is a subset of a fine, uh, actually this is a subset of eventually constant zero sequence. Eventually constant zero sequence is a countable set and this is also a countable set. Actually this option is true. You can try it. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can ask, uh, you can ask us. This is a, this is can, a can problem. you explain how is y countable? Um, what is y? Uh, at uh, xn is equal to one for at most fine. So every sequence yeah. it contains uh, one element mm. has to be one. That is what the statement is saying. At most finitely many n. Uh, that implies the sequence may be like a uh, suppose g. It will have a fifth element as one. Then other elements should be zero, like this. If any, I just mentioning like simple cases. 
there may be a sequence x1 equal to 1 and other uh, should be 0 uh, x5 at most x5 have a 0 sorry x5 has 1 and others is 0 can you get this what i am trying to say is remember we are actually counting the sequences counting the elements yeah so we leave the finitely many people can have one then hmm. one the different type of sequences you can generate out of those constraints the question reduces to only countably many They just found finite union of countable sets, right? Finite sets, like countable sets, right? Like uh, n, n cross n, like that. Yeah. Not yeah, perfectly n. One cross one, like that. Yeah. I'm just saying about C not not uh, C zero zero. This set is countable, but uh, this one is subset of this set only. The proof of C in this uh, this will work on this also. Okay. Can we move on to the next question? What is well ordering principle? Well ordering principle. Sir, any uh, the subset of natural number has a least element? Yeah, that's the well ordering principle. Any subset of a natural number has a least element. Okay, uh, that means uh, we can uh, arrange any subset of natural number as an ascending order. That's a that's a you know, how I say. That's a simple uh, way of saying well ordered principle, right? Okay, I think it is enough to uh, say that. I think this is a this question is a regular theory question only. There's a, that is the characterization of countable sets. That's only this problem. This question was asked in uh, December 2018. Let S be an infinite set. Which of the following statements are true? If there is an injection from S to N, then S is countable. Is it true or not? Yes, sir. The truth. How? You have to show a function uh, by this from S to N, right? If you're from S to N is 1, 1, you can you say there is a bijection from S to N? What do you say about a uh, subset of natural number? Is it countable or not? Sorry, sir. Subset of natural number. I'm asking about uh, what is what you can say about a uh, subset of a natural number. Is it countable or not? Yes, sir. It is countable. Yeah, subset of any countable set is countable. Now, can you define, uh, can you find a sequence, sorry, can you find the bijection from S to N? What do you say about F of S? Will be a subset of? Uh, subset of? N. N. Therefore, this F of S is countable. Countable. Yeah, then there should be a bijection from this to this, uh, shall be mentioned as a G. Okay. So we'll have. What do you say about it? How? 
See, uh, because this f is uh, from s to n, this is one one. But this this function from s to f of s is bijection. Yes. Then uh, we can compose this two. Yes. Right. G yes, composed to f is the function uh, from s to n, which is bijection. Okay. Therefore, first option is true. What you can say about second option? If there is a subjection from s to n. Then yes is countable. Mm, not true. If it is not true, just to give a. Can you give a countable example for this for the set? Yes, there is a bijection uh, subjection from yes to n, but yes is not countable. So if we take S to be whole R and such that, um, or R plus such that uh, up to zero to one every element goes to one and one to two every element goes to um, okay, two. That's okay. Like that. uh, can you? That is okay. Can you choose your set as like this? Not necessarily. Uh, I'm just going in the way that you have already known a function from this set to n. Greatest integer function. You don't remember the greatest integer function? Yes, sir. Greatest integer function. Do the trick here. Because uh, every element from one interval one comma two goes to one. You are in okay with it. I'm choosing yes equal to one comma infinity and uh, choose uh, the subjection function as a greatest integer function. Then uh, that function is subjective, but yes is uncountable. Therefore, second option is not true. What do you say about the third option? What do you say about the third option? If we take s as a real number, yeah. Then S is uncountable. Hmm. Give an injection function from N to S. Yes. Identity Give, function. Yeah. Identity function. Identity function from N to S. Yes, uh, not. N to R. Okay. F of N equal to N uh, defined. Then is a function is injection function. But S is uncountable. Therefore, this option is also. False. What do you say about the fourth option? Fourth option is true. How? If it is true, then you okay. have to give a bijective function from n to s or s to n. Given there is a function which is subjective to n to s, can you give a bijection function from s to n using this f? Can you give any function from uh, using this function? S equals to n. What? S equals to n. n type. S equals to n. S equal to n. I'm asking about what is the function from S to uh, not necessarily n. 
there is a function one one function yes. on the sql accountable set you can give a uh, since first option is true you have just uh, you have to give a function one one function from s to n can you give any function using this f i think this uh, this are our theorem regular theorems right what uh, let any x belongs to s what you can say about f inverse of x what is say about f inverse of x it will after some stage the terms the terms of the sequence get closer okay yes sir uh, for a definition the for every epsilon plus 2 there is a n not in n such that there is a n not in n such that for all n greater than or equal to n not modulus of xn minus xm is less than epsilon okay this is a uh, definition of classic sequence what is the relation between classic sequence and the convergent sequence every convergent sequence is a classic sequence also the converse also true Sequence and every convergent sequence is Cauchy sequence. Okay. What is say about the uh, let x one equal to let x one equal to a and x two equal to b? If we define the function x n equal to x n minus one plus x n minus two divided by two. For n greater than or equal to three, what do you say about this function? Is it convergent? Is this function is convergent? Actually, this function is convergent. This function is converges to some x that x is equal to a plus two b plus by three. Okay, consider this question that x one equal to zero and x two equal to one, and for n greater than or equal to three, define x n equal to x n minus one plus x n by two, x n minus two by two. Then which of the following is are true? By this statement, x1 equal to a and x2 equal to b. Let a equal to zero and b equal to one. This function is converges to sorry. This sequence is converges to a plus two b by three. That means zero plus two into one by three. That is equal to two by three. Right? This sequence converges to two by three. Then what do you say about the option three? Since this sequence is convergent. It is Cauchy. It is Cauchy. Okay. What do you say about the second option? It can. Uh, it is false because the sequence Why? limits to at at most one limit. Limit of the sequence is unique. Yes, sir. Okay. Therefore, this is a false. What do you say about the first option? It has to be monotone. It's not monotone sequence. Just to consider the first two three times. So x three is got one by two, so it's not monotone. Yeah. Therefore, the sequence is not monotone sequence. 
okay what is limit supremum of xn uh, and what is of limit infimum of xn uh so su supremum of the limit of the subsequence of the series uh, of the sequence yeah just define the, what is the limit supremum of xn in words uh, this is a limit this is a infimum of the supremum sequence that means uh, if define yn equal to y capital n equal to supremum of n greater than or equal to n xn then this limit should be equal to infimum of this yn right in which uh, infimum of n in n supremum of n greater than or equal to n xn right Similarly, limit in uh, infimum is equal to supremum of n in n, infimum of n greater than or equal to n xn. What is the relation between limit and limit sup? Uh, limit limit sup what is the relation between limit and limit sup? Limit infimum is less than equal to limit supremum. Limb infimum of xn is less than or equal to limb supremum of xn. Okay. When will this be this will be equal? When is this uh, two uh, these two terms are equal? If xn is convergent. If xn is convergent, then Lim infimum xn equal to lim supremum xn equal to what? Lim of xn. Limit of xn. If uh, convergent, then this two are equal. If this is equal, then uh, xn should be convergent, and that converges to this point. This is a if and only statement. If lim inf of xn equal to lim sup uh, lim sup of xn. Then x one is convergent and that limit is equal to this one. Okay, just consider this question. Uh, this question was from December two thousand nineteen. Let x one be a sequence of non-negative real numbers. Then which of the following is are true? What do you say about first question? First option. Is it true or not? Can I give a sequence whose limit in phase uh, zero, but it not convergent? Not necessarily convergent. Uh, maybe its uh, limit is not equal to uh, zero, but you will say a sequence whose limit in phase zero, but it is not convergent. Can you tell it? Can you say the sequence? Any sequence? One comma zero, one zero one zero. Zero one zero. One zero one two zero three and so on. Okay. This sequence, uh, limit infimum of this sequence is zero, but this sequence is not convergent. Hence, 
also x n squared is also not convergent because x n squared is 0 1 0 4 0 9 and so on okay if you want uh, some more sequence uh, let's choose 0 1 0 1 0 1 like that uh, let me info this sequence is 0 okay no problem uh, you can take any sequence both are look like same the sequence is not con uh, x n squared is not convergent but limit of uh, this sequence is 0 what do you say about the second option lim sup of x n equal to 0 in place lim x n squared equal to 0 sir again uh, not true it should Why? be true. Not true. Okay. Whatever it is, I just prove it. Sir, if we take minus one zero, minus one zero. What is given here? Oh, oh. okay, sir. It's true. Because limb sub is the tail of the sequence. So obviously it will be the limit of the action. So it is true. Okay, it is uh, true. Why? why? Just prove it. Uh, this is very simple only. Given that lim sub of x n equal to zero, but what do you know about lim means lim inf of x n less than or equal to lim sub of x n, which is equal to zero. But what do you know about uh, lim x n? So lim inf of x n. These terms are non-negative real numbers. Therefore, greater than zero. What do you say about the infimum of x n? Yes, this is greater than zero. Because of this, uh, this inequality, you can get lim inf of x n equal to lim sup of x n equal to zero, which is a limit of the sequence, right? If x n converges to zero, then what do you say about x n square? Converges, converges to also zero. converges to zero. Therefore, this option is this option is true. What do you say about the third option? True. Not true. Not true. What? Why? Sir, uh, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Yeah. This example will work. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Lim inf of uh, xn equal to 0, but this sequence is not bounded. Uh, what do you say about this fourth option? When you find a sequence whose limit increase greater than 4, uh, whose squares limit increase greater than 4, but lim of is less than 4. Can you give uh, any sequence? Uh, what is the limit superior of the constant sequence? Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, I was saying uh, in the first example you gave uh, 0, 1, 0, 2. There, if I replace 0 with uh, 3, constant 3, then yeah. uh, limit infimum of yeah. x. Okay. Uh, there is a there is a very simple uh, sequence than this also. What about the constant sequence 3? Yeah, this will work. Yes, sir. This is a lookout of uh, simple examples. Uh, don't, uh, don't much complicate anything. The idea is lim infimum and limit superior both are actually the same for convergent sequence. Yeah. So you can use that idea and get a constant sequence. Square is greater than 4, but definitely that limit mm. may not be greater than 4. Greater than 4, that's only. So what is the easiest conversion sequence? That's my question actually, originally. Easiest conversion sequence in the life is just constant yeah. sequence. Uh, you can any sequence of a base the trick, but uh, constant sequence, any convergent sequence have a limit for limit to be equal. You can find a sequence 
whose limit is less than 4, but whose point is uh, greater than 4. The simple way is the constant sequence x equal to 3. That's only. So this option is also wrong. Okay. Uh, can you wind, can we wind up here? Yes. Yes, Riyas. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, Thank you, sir. Okay. It it was a very informative session and uh, very motivational too. Could see things in a different manner and hope it uh, helps me. It will definitely help me to um, solve problems. Uh, and uh, now I would like to uh, ask the participants if they have any questions. Any participants have any questions? The session is open for uh, questions. You can even ask any questions. Like, um, what do you have to do for next? So, which book will you suggest? Where should I practice uh, for CIS Carnet? Uh, I'd rather uh, suggest any particular book for all subjects. For your so uh, for your analysis, you can choose uh, Dr. Ace Foundation and uh, Ajit Kumar Saru books. Uh, basic concepts in the analysis, right? Before uh, taking it, you can uh, read the uh, book uh, Foundations in Mathematics, which was written by uh, Kumaran Sir, Ajit Kumar Sir, and uh, Baba. I don't know the name. Baba Kumaran. Ah, Priya Sir. Baba Kumaran. Yes. You can read that book and then go to a book of the ISIS by them. That book is very nice. You can read it by a one also. Now I would like to call upon my good friend Rosha to deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we finally came to an end of this long webinar. And I, Roshu Kurum, will be presenting the vote of thanks for this webinar today. First of all, I'd like to thank our guest webinar speaker, Sarias, for visiting and enlightening us with his knowledge. Thank you. This webinar was informative with interesting views. Uh, it gave deep insight with the topic at hand. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it will help us benefit in our future studies and our entrance as well. Thank you, thank you. For taking out your time from your busy schedule and teaching us about the topics today. Thank you. I'd also like to thank our director, Dr. Ashish Sharma, and our AGD of Mathematics Department, Dr. Anjan Ray Chaudhary, for giving us permission to organize this webinar today and inviting Sir Riyas to conduct it. Very deep thanks to all the faculty members of our mathematics department. Especially a very <coughs> warm thanks to uh, Sir David Raj Michael and the team of students who worked very really hard to organize this event and make it a success. Thank you to all the participants who attended this event today and hope you all had a great learning experience. Thank you, Rosha. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next week on 4th of Feb at 3 p.m., we have a webinar on continuity and differentiability. It would be great to have you guys. Uh, let's make the most out of it. So, see you next week. With this, we, I conclude. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you all who have been uh, in part of this uh, webinar series. I'd like to personally thank uh, Riaz for taking out his time from my end as well. I would also like to thank, uh, in fact, a lot of thanks to the first year MSc students of the uh, Department of Mathematics in SMIT who have really worked hard to put up all this show very well. Thank you guys. I really ap appreciate your team effort and I expect the same team effort, in fact, in a uh, more elegant manner in the coming webinar as well. Thank you all. We'll see you by 4th of February, 3 p.m., the second talk on this similar series. Thank you all. Thank you, Riyas.